Hello and welcome to The Best Movie Ever Made, an experimental movie podcast designed with one thing in mind, to find the best movie ever made. I'm your host, Chris Eiffel, and I'm joined by my co-host and fellow mad scientists, Rob Scucci and Bob Hasek. Hey guys, how are you and why are we doing this? I'm doing great, because uh, like you said, we're doing a good movie, and we're doing a good B movie, which is going to be the um, the theme of our following season, season 10, if I'm not mistaken, where wow. we're going to be doing the bottom of the barrel of the B movies um so this is our primer yeah. this is what a b movie should be um you know it's like it's low budget um i think kevin bacon's relatively unknown at this time correct me if i'm wrong but it's he definitely wasn't like the hollow man that we know and love you know so <laughs> he does always look like he's wearing somebody else's skin for some reason so it's not too far <laughs> off. But, um yeah so i'm very excited uh to kick off the next season and to end this one uh, and that's all i got bob yeah, it also ties in with the last season, which was big. And like, uh, according to the the write ups, these th the big things in Tremors were called graboids. Yeah, and and yeah. those are big. They're, they're big, and they're they're big mother humpers, as they said in the <laughs> in, in yep. the PG thirteen ver version, which was obviously changed <laughs> to keep the rating at PG thirteen, which in, is so dumb in retrospect. I mean, language. Yeah. I mean, give me a break. But yeah, uh, yeah. Big. yeah. Graboids. I, I think that was uh, what's his name? Chang, uh, Chang's place. It's Chang's like convenience store. Yeah, Victor. Mm -hmm. It's Victor Wong, right? Is the yeah, uh, right? Actor. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. yeah, he's the one that comes up like coins the name in the episode in the uh, movie. I think I'm pretty yeah. sure. I don't. It, it sounds ridiculous, but it's can't be, can't be yeah. fun. It's uh, YouTube it's... com, YouTube sure. comments. You know what? I don't care what the haters say. I think Catwoman was great. To further bolster my theory when it's a good movie, you see just leveled, measured responses that mm. accurately describe the movie. So, um, number one, the characters are what make this movie. Shows you what... Shows you must have... Uh, they, that wasn't me, that's them. Shows you must have great <laughs> characters in a film to make it stand the test of time. Love the fact that Val and Earl are typical 90s blue-collar workers. They give the movie more authenticity. Next comment. I remember watching this in theaters. R.I.P. Fred Ward. He died last year, apparently. Um, oh. Next comment. This is a great movie. Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward have great chemistry and are really funny. Uh, scares, laughs, even a love interest. Highly recommended. Next comment. One of the few movies I can watch over and over again and never get bored with it. And the last comment, fun movie, great cast, thrills, smarts, and humor still holds up after all these years. Which is like, you know. All fair. The yeah, yeah, fair, accurate. level, reasonable assessment of the film. Yeah, and we're going to uh, start to get into why uh, we agree so strongly when we throw it to test number one. The best of its kind. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Best of its kind. Oh... Did we, did we do one of those? Did you do one, Chris? Pretty sure. Best of its, did you do a Best of its Kind? Yeah. Did I not but download it? It, um, might, it? it might be, like, further down the list. Uh, oh, fuck. Um, yeah, well, sir. shit. Uh, da, 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 da. Wait, hold on. No, you started at Test 3. What works well? It's number one. Best of its Kind. I just must have not seen it on the Google Drive. So thank you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Was that clear? Because hold on. I, yeah. I'm going to play it one more time. Do it one more time. Yes, number one. The best of its kind. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm off nice. to a great start with my soundboard. Nice. That's on the bingo card. <laughs> uh, Lake Placid with Bill Pullman. Uh, I know it's not a good movie. I, I know that. Oh, horrible. But, uh, but I like it. Uh, 47. Okay. It's, it, it's Bill Pullman. He's awesome. He is awesome. Yeah. Man, that speech in Independence Day, you know, that movie that Bob loves so much. Oh, God, don't even start. <laughs> Welcome to Earth, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, but Bill Pullman. Uh, the faculty, Jordana Brewster and uh, Josh Hartnett, 55%. Are we doing that one? That, we, that's yep. a movie we have done, yeah. Deep Blue Sea, a movie we must do. Uh, <laughs> yep. It's got a 60, surprisingly. I think that's because it has Samuel L. Jackson in it. Doesn't that, isn't that LL Cool J giving like a really good omelet recipe too? Is that okay. that one? It might I be. I don't remember. Like he's got the camcorder and like he knows he's about to die. So like his la the way he wants to be remembered is like how to make the perfect omelet. <laughs> like he's. <laughs> <laughs> I I I don't specifically remember that. I remember yeah. that him being in like a uh, a kitchen underwater with sharks in there. Yeah. 
I think, right. I think that's I think that's Deep Blue Sea, right? Okay. You know what's uh you know what's funny uh is that Stir of Echoes is not good either, but it got a sixty seven and that's also Kevin Bacon. All right. Oh. It seems to be his territory. Like th- th- this kind of film seems to be his territory that he does like really yeah. well in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and a seventy four for Kurt Russell in Big Trouble in Little China. Another one uh. I think we I think we could do it. I think we could yeah. do that bad or good. Yeah. Good. Only good. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of crazy shit that happens in that movie, but all right, fair enough. Uh, for an average of 60.6, what do you guys think Tremors did? Yeah, It, it, it tanked the boss office, so I'm going to have to yeah. say like 70. Yeah, I was going to go 65. Um, okay, an 88. Oh, good. Yeah, right, good how about that? For a plus 20, yeah. yeah, plus 27.4 uh, bolsters our argument and it's best of its kind. So yeah. how about that? Do you have a bumper for test number two? Ain't that a pitch? Yeah. Test number two. Ain't that a pitch? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I, okay, I promise sweet. I have the rest of them too. Oh, okay, nice. All right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Who goes first? Um... I'll go first, because it's been a couple weeks. Um, there once was an underground worm who liked to make Val and Earl squirm. <laughs> they experience their plights quick because their problems are seismic, and the graboids <laughs> are eager to learn. Well, that's cool. It reminded me of uh, Seismic Seducer, a, a phrase that we <laughs> swore we'd use more, but we haven't. And I'm, I'm going to say right now that um, you mentioning that is a bit of foreshadowing for a later bit. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> My bad. Bob, you or me? I'll go. Okay. Okay, there once was a movie called Tremors, which tanked at the box office, if you remember. It's pure fun from the beginning. Found myself constantly grinning. Not sure I can say the same for its successors. Mm. Yeah, fair. That's totally fair. Yeah. <laughs> this is the town of perfection. Please head in another direction, because it's loaded with worms. That will make you squirm. Because they eat people and resemble erections. Chris, four and a half. <laughs> yeah, Chris, four. Nice. Okay, four, two, five. I'll take it. Uh, I'm not even going to jot it down because we're not going to compare it to anything. Yeah. Uh, as we throw it to, but thanks for the win. I, you, you guys know it. I need the win today. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> test, test number three. Uh, I changed the name up because I hate it. Uh, what's, what's, what works well is better, I think. All right. Test number three. What works well. Yeah. <laughs> I love music. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. I, I, I tried to span the gambit with uh, all of the... It's like proto trap music. Okay, so everything that is in uh, good taste or, or um, you know, still works now when you watch the movie. Yeah. And there's uh, a good amount of that. Although I'm going to knock them. I'm still going to do most offensive for a couple okay. just because I think it's funny. Um, yeah. Number one, superb foreshadowing. There were many instances where you don't know what the monster is yet, but you could put together the puzzle uh, thanks to some of the pieces that they give you that lock together pretty well. On your rewatch, you're like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. Or if you're smart, you put it together for the first time. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's uh, we talk about pacing a lot on this podcast. Number two is perfect pacing. I, I, it's just great. It's it's like a ninety minute movie, right? But it feels like a thirty five minute movie. That's that's how all cinema should be. Agreed. Like I said, it like I said in my in my pitch, it's pure fun from start to finish. It's just it like the pacing is absolutely perfect. There's really yeah. not a scene that, like, if you were flipping through channels and on sci-fi, you came across Tremors. It's not a scene you'd be disappointed to land on, I don't think. Right? Yeah, I agree. Uh, number three, sick soundtrack. It's kind of raising Arizona e, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's got that <laughs> like if Oregon Trail, the video game, had like an actual like live music, non MIDI soundtrack. This is what I would imagine, like when you're like going over the hill in your little wagon. <laughs> you know? Uh, all right, so here's a weird one, uh, and it also takes place in the desert. Have you guys ever seen the Young Guns 1 and 2 movies? The first one I love. I love the first one. I don't love the second one, but the soundtrack on the second one is unbelievable. Bon Jovi did it. 
And really? I'm not a huge Bon Jovi guy, but it's it's like I kind of want to just clip it and like make TikTok video like a yeah. TikTok video with some of that sound and just be like, <laughs> you know how like uh, you guys remember when somebody was like, oh, the original uh, X Men cartoon in America, they yeah. they were like, hey, can you make us some music for this? And then the composer was like. A piano lit on fire because the the, the song is just so fucking badass, you know. It's like um, that. it's uh, it's better uh, than the movie. Other unassumingly great video game soundtrack: Sonic the Hedgehog three by Michael Jackson. Oh wow! No yeah, he had a heavy hand really. in that production, and it's fucking sick. No really? shit. Yeah, three or three D. I forget. I, I, there might be. I'm not a big Sonic guy, but it's um uh, one of yeah. the Sonic games is Michael Jackson, um scoring it. I always thought oh. Sonic was fun, but I I never really I I was not a huge like we were not a big Sega household. So. I don't like the fast side scrollers. It's just like yeah. it it gets a little boring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number four, correct character creation and cultivation. Right. I, I'm surprised with the uh, the perfect pacing. This kind of goes right hand in hand. You meet uh, Earl and Val in the beginning. You meet a, a um, you know science lady who is like very charismatic right up front you just love all these characters victor wong's uh i think it's chang i i feel bad now if it's not um yeah. but bert you like bert even reaper mcintyre's yeah. character you know the, everybody you meet them you kind of get them immediately it's just good writing Every, everybody makes yeah. sense it's one of the things um uh early simpsons are especially good for this they have really the, the characters were developed right off the bat and Whatever weird situation they're thrown in, you you could reliably guess like, how they're going to react to that situation, right? Because they're developed so well, like right in, right in the beginning exposition scenes. Sure. I'm gonna call a uh, worst. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, most offensive with science lady. Yeah, I know. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I I was like floundering, and I was like, "You have to say something. You don't want dead yeah. air, so just go with lady." You know, you shouldn't, but like, I couldn't think a scientist. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? No. I, I knew what you were talking about. So and and also Reba, Reba McIntyre was her first movie. I did not know that. Oh, I didn't know that either. And the director was actually very much like, "No, I'm so sick of these pop stars and these musicians saying they can act. I, I'm I'll, I'll give her an audition because you know as a favor." And mm -hmm. he ended up loving her, and she did well. <laughs> I thought. Yeah, she she was good. Um, I'm gonna hold any more thoughts uh, on that subject for later. <laughs> Number five: creative camera angles. It's, it, yeah. it wasn't, uh, I don't want to say it was run of the mill. There was some rehashing of other clever angles I've seen in earlier movies, but mm -hmm. they do enough of it to keep it fun. Like, uh, like on the ground through the dirt, I thought yeah. was really cool. I mean, that was probably yeah. CGI, but like, uh, it was a, a cool idea. There's, there's some Dutch, but not, uh, Battlefield Earth. <laughs> level uh you <laughs> know there's, there's well, yeah. <laughs> so some low angles some high angles is just keep it um keep you guessing you know which is, is yep. no i i don't think there was any cgi in this at all okay so they really they must have, have dragged the cold. camera through the dirt which oh was totally awesome. they totally did yeah yeah which looked really awesome uh number six and this is my last one so if you guys want to mention anything that still holds up uh imaginative movie monster i i don't know that i had been aware of any uh movie monster that eats you from like under the ground before this maybe D i don't know was dune written before this i don't know but yeah, it seems I like would... a good movie monster to me yeah dune dune's an old script it's yeah. an old novel yeah. but and it I'm wasn't sure. it wasn't quite the same no it's not it's no not. i i really thought that the uh monster was creative the only thing it closely resembles to me, which I think I'm not sure which one came out first, but the sandworms from Beetlejuice. Maybe like if I got very. This similar came out vibe. first. I this think, came out uh, first. Yeah, I think uh, this, so. this was this, 90, came, this came out first. Yeah, I think okay. Beetlejuice was ninety one. Okay. okay, so they well, so they stole from. Well, also the worms in this movie. Get this: at first, they didn't have the three snake heads come out to grab people. They yeah. actually had a the the outer shell peel back. And the crew kept making fun that it looked like a foreskin coming back off of a un, an, un, <laughs> an unsafe right. wiener. Yes, I mean we we all we all knew that the wiener jokes were coming. I already delivered one. So yeah. so they decided to change it to uh, extensions instead of the peel back. 
Yeah. So yeah. Okay. They, they were smart enough to know that would have been silly. They knew their audience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They they gave their audience credit. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Uh, you guys want to mention anything complimentary uh, before I knock it a couple times? Um. Uh, now this whole episode is going to be complimentary, so our our feelings will come out. Yeah. Okay. So number seven is a uh, uh, something I thought was offensive. Toilet Tecates. <laughs> oh. They're they're cracking beers out of a like an ice toilet. Yeah. yeah. Find something else to put your fucking beers in. I, that, I get that, that that went to their character so much though. That was like the blue collar just like we don't give a fuck. Yeah, know? but that's too <laughs> that's for me a barrel. It's good. Yeah. A toilet's <laughs> like, come on, that's a little fun. Yeah, if you're a general contractor, you you, you gotta have uh, ample supply of buckets that you can We use. ain't got no fancy barrels out here. <laughs> <laughs> they had a gigantic one that they carried people around in. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Uh, number eight, Earl often insinuates Melvin mauling. He's, he's quite a bit older than the teenager he is threatening to beat up repeatedly. Uh, well, yeah. I understand yeah. that. I understand that Melvin is a pain in the ass. <laughs> Melvin's a fucking douche. <laughs> he is. So. Yeah, he is. Uh, and number nine, Rob, you kind of uh, stole my thunder on this one, but I'm putting sorry. skin on a skeleton and casting it as your star. All right. Uh, anything else offend you in the movie before we move on to the the, the next bumper? No. no. But you know what, Kevin Bacon? He, I found I, I was thinking how what he resembles. It's Scott Whalen during his Velvet Revolver. Days with like the Guns N' Roses band because he's he has like that gaunt like heroin addict, like weird like receding hairline that's like kind of spiked up a little bit and yeah, it just makes you look like I don't know, not real like you're wearing somebody else's. He's got a, he's got a receding upper lip line, <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Okay, test number four the best dialogue. Test number four the best dialogue. Okay, let's start with flying snakes. What number is this? Five. Oh wait, wait, Five. we don't. <laughs> I'm gonna do one. Sick. <laughs> Sick. Awesome. Wait, so is it, we only have four though, right? For this one. Uh, yeah, because I'm doing number three. All right. So. Four yard. All right. Cool. <laughs> so number. So <laughs> let's start over with number. Five. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Flying snakes. Flying snakes. Let's do it. <laughs> Walter, they better be fast. We don't want to be stuck on a couple of canners. Uh, those snake things couldn't travel that fast. Shit, for all you know, they could fly. Hey, what do you want, this Colt or a... Uh... Edgar's all right. Rifle. Please get back here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, Earl, here's some Swiss cheese and some bullets. Oh, thanks, Walter. <laughs> Okay, that sounds like bad dialogue, but I, I thought it was really funny. That's good. Um, the flying snake stuff, yeah, fine, but the Swiss cheese and bullets is like yeah. uh, really odd. Like you get you get the uh, idea that uh, Chang's convenience store is run by a very cheap Chang, and yeah. his helping hand is some bullets and some cheese, and yeah. uh, that was a per- perfect way to uh, cement that feeling about about the man yeah. who's uh, got a bunch of equipment that doesn't work in his convenience store as well. Yeah. Uh, let's go to number four. This one uh, is a little better than that, I'd say. This one's oh. called Handyman. Oh, number four. Yarg. <laughs> Handyman. Let's Handyman. do it. No breakfast? I did it yesterday. It was bologna and beans? No. It was eggs. I did eggs. Over easy. The hell you did? Bologna and beans. It's your turn. Well, I guess when I'm your age, I'll forget what I eat, too. Ow! God damn it! I ask you, there's a job for intelligent men. Well, show me one, I'll ask him. Well, I mean, if we were real serious about money, we'd quit being hired hands. Handyman, Earl. We are handyman. Yeah, yeah, we are. 
would you quit this job and I don't find yourself some real employment? Are you gonna give up all this personal freedom? I don't know. I listened to Weird Al's Handy after this movie, by the way. I don't know if you know that one. <laughs> no. He's like, I'm so handy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember That's that. Good. That's um, good. What, what better way to set up their relationship? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love the, the bologna and beans. Uh, eggs over easy. Uh, let's do the rocks, paper, scissors. Yeah. Thing mm-hmm. to see who wins, and they rocks, paper. And I, I don't know if you noticed, but I think the owl only wins one of them. It's I'm correct. pretty sure... Yeah, I think Earl wins like four out of five. Or yeah, because doesn't like doesn't he do um scissors every time and gets smashed by a rock? Like, he lose, yes. he's, they do the same one every time, but like the 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 one crucial moment, like they switch it up and it fucks it over. Yeah, um, yeah. Speaking to how iconic that scene is, I was talking to somebody from work, and they're like, "Oh, what are you getting into tonight?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm watching Tremors, a movie that like you know people." probably don't have in the regular rotation at this point maybe in time. Not. Maybe not. And all they do is reply like, yeah, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> that was <laughs> the response and text. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I I really do love the uh the argument and then the um uh Earl says we is is this a job for intelligent men and Kevin Bacon's uh Val says back, I don't know if I see what I'll ask him or something like that. Yeah. It's just a clever little, you know, it gives them character and you understand where they are in life and why yeah. they want to leave perfection. The Blue collar ball breaking. Yeah. Other. yeah. They love each other like brothers. You know, it's, it's just yeah. really good. Uh, number three, this is Val. I'm going to do this one myself. Um, <laughs> there's really not going to be much voice work here. But... Number. Wait one second. Number three. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. These are great. Are these yeah. are you ripping these off of SpongeBob? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just want to do a pirate voice. You hear my if you turn it up real high, you this hear my daughter. Your pirate like, voice. Yeah. It's you, awesome. you hear my daughter like giggling in the background underneath him going okay, she's like, one, two, eight, seven, four. <laughs> <laughs> Can you play it one more time for me? Number three. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's so awesome. Let's keep these for next season, please. Uh they'll be in the rotation, don't worry. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, so Val uh, is Kevin Bacon, and Rhonda is, I'm sorry, I don't know the actress's name, but the love interest, the okay. science lady. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and because she's a science uh, major, a, I think she's yeah. still in college. Um, yeah, like so I don't know student. that you could call her a scientist, really. She hasn't graduated yet, so <laughs> for now, yeah. a science lady. Uh, they keep going to her for all of the information because she's much smarter than everybody in this town. Uh, yeah. Or at least more knowledgeable. Let's let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. So uh, Val, when the uh, raboid is trying to do, he's doing something suspicious. The worm is underneath the building, and nobody knows what it's doing. And Val says, "Hey, Rhonda, what do you think it's trying to do now?" And Rhonda says, "Why do you keep asking me?" <laughs> Super <laughs> flat. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. like like she has any idea what the thing's fucking thinking and it, it made right. me laugh so you know i i, I put it yeah. down but uh it's not quite as uh good as number oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have fun uh, here plan ahead plan ahead let's do it you know those uh college kids Turn up oil or uranium or something out there. Next thing, the feds will be at our door. Sorry, time to move. Eminent domain. Down, honey, down. Yeah, Bert. Well, you worry. You're gonna have a heart attack before you get a chance to survive World War Three. We'll see. We'll see. Hey guys, listen. Herring going out. What do you think? Could be. Uh, catch you later, Chang. You gotta schedule the key. Oh yeah. See, we plan ahead. That way we don't do anything right now. Earl, explain it to me. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah. That, that's I really something that. I would say in the workplace. Just like when you're pissed off over like a new like procedure being implemented, and you're like, oh, okay. Well, uh, he said to do it. So fuck him. <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah. No, it's a good setup because it, it makes him seem, um, I don't know, a little lazy or something, but lovable. Uh, Chang's equipment's faulty, which is important. Uh, that piece of equipment is important, important later in the story. And then you get a feel for how Bert is like anti government, save all your guns, yeah. like you know, they're coming for you kind of guy. Yeah, uh, yeah. so it, it sets up uh, 
a lot of what's going to happen later in the movie. So yeah. yes, and not only totally. is it funny, but yeah, it's it's a re- really good setup. And uh, it's go ahead, Rob. It's casually folded in. Like it's not like yeah. no one's explaining anything. It's like oh yeah, you're the doomsday guy. Like you know, it's right. just like oh, that's the dude. Yep. It's it's good writing because it's not it's not they're not hitting you over the head with it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. It, it, casual is a good way to put it. I agree. Yeah, and it do, it just doesn't make you feel it. It seems like a regular conversation. It doesn't make you feel like they're yeah. forcing it. So. Yeah. Um, and some more of that with number one, Daddy. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking with that one. I was a little slappy. <laughs> oh boy. Jeez. Okay. Uh, this one's called Shithead. All right. Let's see the snare roll in real quick. You know what? Fuck it. <laughs> I'm making the run for the cat like hell you are. Get real, Earl. I'm faster than you. Yeah, I'm best at driving the cat. Not while I'm around. Well, damn it, now listen to me. I'm older and I'm wiser. Yeah, well, you're half right. Damn. I lost. Guess I'll have to do it. Uh, I won. I pick who does it. Ready when you are, Miguel. It's it's really it's it's really good. I mean, you this is they do the balance of comedy with action well, and you feel like these guys really do love each other, you know. And they're calling each other uh, shithead and dick fart or whatever. I don't know what they call each other, but like, and it's, I, I one of them. It's <laughs> badass without trying to be badass. They're just like kind of like oh, like it's just another day on the job for them. It's what it seems like. It's like. Like yeah, they're, tr- they're trying to like, leave for their own reasons, but like this thing happens, like oh, we better stick around and figure this out, you know? Like, yeah. like okay, yeah. <laughs> Let me bring my socket wrench with me, or whatever. Uh, but then, uh, <laughs> like after insulting each other like that out of love, uh, Bert is clearly or uh, Earl is clearly very upset that uh, Kevin Bacon is now running for his life. Yeah, but it mixed right. in a little bit of that uh, lawnmower uh, idea, which is I, I I wanted that to prompt me to say that they came a lot up with a lot of really clever ways to distract the graboids yeah. too. Um, yeah, so that was one there with the the lawnmower, um, mm-hmm. and we'll we'll talk about more in the catch-all because uh, most of it's positive. But for now, Rob, why don't we send it to your ad read? Sure. <clears throat> Today's episode of the worst movie ever made is brought to you by Dante's Peak Three: Dante's Revenge. <laughs> Linda Hamilton is a cafe worker in a small town, but little does she know, she's pregnant with the future OEM director, Con Jonner. In an event to destroy, in an effort to destroy the human resistance, Dante from the future sends a futuristic volcano guy to Hamilton's present time to terminate her pregnancy <laughs> and boil her other grandma alive because she still has too many grandmas. Pierce Brosnan <laughs> is also in this movie, but that's just the name of the character, and he's actually portrayed by Pedro Pascal. Dante's Peak 3, Dante's Revenge. The magma will find you if you don't start running now. Um, <laughs> I am absolutely going to that. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine seeing a volcano guy coming? Like, and, like he just like, burns through like the saloon doors, like walks right past Hamilton, just like punches her grandma on the fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> like in Wicker Man, when uh, Nicholas Cage is in the bear suit. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's like starting to deck old ladies. Yeah. And then he's like, stay down. He's like, drop kicks that lady into the fucking wall. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great movie. Uh, worst movie ever made.com. If you want to see our back catalog, we do cover The Wicker Man in season one. We, we do, yes. I think it was like, what, number three? Three nice. or four, yeah. Yeah. Three. Uh, three. Three. Uh, test number five the best production. Five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Test number five, 
the best production. Yeah. I, I and, played that uh, Chinese instrument myself. Yeah. <laughs> Chin, a Chinese instrument. Holy shit. Okay. So I, well, <laughs> it it came out of Chinese modern on Minecraft, so I'm not. It's not another science lady comic. Uh, I'm, I'm technically correct here. Yeah, Ch- Chinese modern is like anything post 1920s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. and Jean Claude Van Damme is like trying to get food out of a walk on the street, like for sure in that scene. <laughs> yeah. All right. So best production, I just tagged as self aware. Okay. So oh, I'll, yeah. I'll explain best I can. Really so, good. so 1990s when this came out, correct? 1990. 90, yeah. <laughs> so arachnophobia came out the exact same year, and both of them, in my opinion, succeeded with its purpose and execution is to to remake big monster movies of the 1950s like with birds, the right? with the effects and technology and good actors. That we had in whatever the you nineties, know, I guess. Yeah. Because like, but if you think of like Earth versus the Spider, or the Amazing Colossal Man, or even like Mothra and Godzilla, they were all like B movies of the nineteen fifties that just mm-hmm. they they did they were marketed themselves as like these are huge monster movies, but they didn't deliver in scares, they didn't deliver in effects, yeah. they just didn't deliver, uh, and they couldn't get big name actors to to sign on to them. But this did. Both of these movies did. Yeah. And I think I think that just like they succeeded. Yeah. And I-, I honestly I think this and arachnophobia would make a seriously good double bill. I, I would oh, almost yeah. Yeah. suggest arachnophobia as our good movie for the end of B movie season. That's I haven't seen that since I was a kid, but that was it's a creepy crawly and it gets it's now that you mention it, it's got the same vibe where it's like they know what they're doing and they're just like leaning into it. Okay, I haven't seen it. How about this? We make it the last movie of the B movie season, and I'll view it uh, with a critical lens, and I will try to make it okay. the worst movie ever made. And you guys, but, it's, just but it's got John Goodman, so good luck. Yeah, it has John Goodman. I and uh, doesn't it have Jeff Daniels? Yes. Yeah. Wow, that's going to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> good men. Good we'll, men. We'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, this this movie is um, like delivering for their audience what they know their audience wants without um what is what do we call it uh, ham fisting yeah, yeah. No, it's not ham fisted by the third act it's just yeah, like a wink no. and a nudge it's it's like yeah. to bob's point it's just like it's like they they they, they could have turned to the camera at any point in the film and be like you know why you're here yeah you no know? <laughs> right <laughs> yep for real uh okay test number six the best acting test number six the best acting yeah <laughs> all right uh i apologize this first clip is a little long uh um, it, it's because there's a space in between you'll see but uh it, on either end it's important you should apologize for the disco intro anyway <laughs> <laughs> i apologize for the disco intro this is number <laughs> one i'm using your one because i like it better oh okay right. cry baby Man, we decided to leave this place just one damn day too late, you know? Yeah, well, sure is all nothing to stop us now. Everybody we know between here and Bixby's already dead. Look out! Is there some higher force at work here? I mean, are we asking too much of life? Who the hell are these guys? What are they doing? Blasting? Hey! Where are you guys? It's not like there's another road, asshole! The psycho music. I like that. I didn't catch yeah, that. Yeah, hung up. I am not. 
It's just the the, the the a little bit of time between the exchange where he's like, should I should I just nudge him just a little more? <laughs> Needle him just a bit more. Yeah, yeah. It's um, realistic. That's how I, that's how like people actually do it in real life, and it's great. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he he couldn't help himself. He had to he had to say one more thing, but he thought yeah. about it. Uh, their chemistry is just great. Uh, I I thought the lookout scream from Earl, uh, Fred yeah. Ward was uh, convincing, and that's a tough one to pull off. And yeah. I, you know, not just the two of them acting really well. Uh, it it's also, I thought that truck was acting great. Like that yeah. was a very convincing. Uh, I'm being attempted. Uh, like uh, something is attempting to swallow me at the moment. Yeah, you know that truck really seemed like it was stuck in something. And yeah. they did a great job, like skirting the tires off as it, uh, you know, screamed away from the scene. Yeah, just yeah. everything, everything for that worked uh, for me. So I apologize for the length, but I think it was all important. Yeah. Um, number two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna start mixing twos in. <laughs> like, oh. like when we do fact or no fact, when <laughs> Mom says the second one, can we do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to have a quick trigger finger on this one today. I'll, ha- I'll have pregnant pauses. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, this one's called Winch. Hey, Rhonda, you ever heard of anything like this before? Oh, sure, Earl. Everybody knows about them. We just didn't tell you. Oh, hell, man, no one ever saw anything like this. We're really on to something here. I'll tell you one damn thing. Old Chang don't get his slick mitts on this for no measly 15 bucks. You got that right. Woo! All right, here's the plan. We need a, a flat bit. Yeah, right, with a winch? Yeah, five ton, maybe. No, 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 no. Don't want to winch it. Don't want to winch it to tear it all up. All right, a crane. Yeah, a crane with, uh, with lifting straps. Hey, hey, shut up! The way I figure it, there's three more of these things. What? Three more? I've got seismographs all over this valley. Now, if you compare the different readings, here's one at 2 o'clock yesterday. But here's one three miles away at the exact same time. Now, that's two. But here... Yeah, yeah, we'll take your word for it. Yeah, well, where's your truck? Just be honest. I just like how decisive they are. It's like, like when, you know when someone tries over explaining, like, yeah. you know how, you know when you want to go out to like, you're choosing between two places with like your friends and like one person makes a case for the place and everybody agrees, but they keep like making the case. They keep, they keep trying to sell it even yeah. though you're already right. like, so we're already going. Right. Like, dude, like yeah, stop yeah. selling motherfucker. Like, yeah, we're, we're, exactly. We're going yeah. to go there. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is exactly what it felt like when True. she's like, I, I have it figured. And they're like, let's just get in the fucking truck and get out of here. But I also love the dialogue where they like they are deciding how they're going to lift this creature and get it back to town. And they're like they're they're having a a small debate about what kind of equipment to use. And it just felt they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to write those lines, but it just they're treating it like a home renovation that they would probably have be on a job for. They're just like they're. Yeah, they just have like their working class mentality the whole time. It's and it shows that they're experienced handymen. Yeah, the, the, the fact that they're throwing out so many yep. options for for lifting. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's do number three. Yeah. <laughs> Decoy. Hank, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The cat. Could we take the cat? Oh Jesus, it's slower than hell. <laughs> yeah, but it weighs better than thirty tons. There's no way they could lift thirty tons. Could they? I mean, but we can't all fit on the bulldozer. No. No, but we could uh, drag something. Though. We, could, we, we, we could pull a car behind it. I don't know. Hell, that old semi trailer. Its tires are flat. Doesn't matter. That cat can pull anything. Well, all right. We just roll on out of here. We've got a plan. <laughs> of course, it's a hell of a long walk. Listen. They only respond to vibrations, right? Well, couldn't we distract them somehow? Yeah, good. Something to keep them busy, like a like a decoy. <laughs> yeah, the uh, I I think in the wrong hands that scene goes goes bad fast. 
True. Yeah. Because that they're explaining what they're going to do so that the viewers aren't like, oh, that's convenient. Like they they're giving yeah. the option as if it already exists to make it a more plausible. Like, oh, now they have this big cat, which they might have shown earlier in the movie anyway. But they're yeah. like, oh, you know, like this big tank or whatever. I'd be pissed if they didn't explain it the way that they did. But that's a delicate situation to have to work around. And uh, you have good actors uh, making it making it work. That That's a tough scene. I can see a lot of people having a hard time plausibly yeah. explaining that to the camera. Imagine you know? if, like, um, Johnny Good Boy Jones or whatever from, like, whatever his <laughs> name is from Battlefield Earth. Like, he just starts drawing in the sand. He's like, I learned about... I know calculus now. That's how we could solve this, <laughs> this, um, well, this graboid dilemma. <laughs> if you want to get a good uh, giggle out of Bob, then all you have to do is say his real name, which is Barry Pepper. Barry Pepper. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it, it's a, like, it sounds like a stage name, but it's like, it sounds like the kind of stage name that Engelbert Humperdinck is. It's like that, that you chose yeah. that name to represent your that. career. <laughs> right. Like that wasn't thrust upon you by birth. Like you, you, you like wrote it out and decided that's what you're going to call yourself. It sounds like your celebrity chef name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> All right. Number. Four. Yarg. Val. I can hear you in that one. Definitely. Val versus Bert. I think we could have made a stand at our place. We had food, water. You can't fight him like that. So you two screw ups hold us way the hell out here. I, I, why don't you just back off, the Spring Bean? You know we could have left your worthless ass on the roof. I wish you had, fearless leader. Who the hell put you two in charge? Don't push me, just Bert. Back just off, don't Bert. goddamn push me. Them grab boys don't kill him. I will. I'd have torn your place out for money in a half an hour. Come on. Come on. Just let it go. Let it go. Forget about it. No, I, I know he does. He thinks he knows everything. That's good. Quality. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I was waiting to see what you guys thought about that because I thought that was the scene where, you know, when something is almost too spicy and you like, you're eating it anyway because it tastes yeah. good, but you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're thinking about ditching? Yeah. I was yeah. thinking about ditching on this. I had it uh, selected, and I was like, I don't know. Like, it's you know maybe what it, a little too spicy. It reminds me of um, the like 2003 or 2004 Dawn of the Dead remake when they're all on the roof. Okay. I think it's getting, it's getting a little heated, but they reel it back in, and it's like, okay, I, I, it's, you know, it could have been phoned in badly, but they, they did a good job capturing the um, heat of the moment, I guess. Like, they're pissed off, but they also have to acknowledge the fact that there's not a whole lot of options otherwise. Yeah, it's true. And and nobody but each other <laughs> to, to help them get out of the situation. So it's, Yeah, it's, I, I, I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Okay, good, good. I did too. Um, all right, that is all we have for clip first, uh, clips for today, so let's throw two factor no fact. So, oh. right. Unfortunately, um, we have the, uh, the original bumper for this one. Uh, Bob is a liar. He will lie to confuse us, but he will also mix lies with the truth to attack us. His attack is psychological and powerful. I'm going to make a prediction and say Rob's going to lose this one. Okay. Because okay. this one is this one is called Director Danmir Kilder. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's really it, it's it, it's about director Ron Underwood. Okay. So, okay. last week or it was the week before, I forget which one. Uh, Rob said he knows jack shit about directors, so yeah. I felt bad making this one all about the director. Yeah. That's entertainment, baby. So, director Ron Underwood has directed all but one. Don't forget, this is a good movie week, so this is four facts and a lie. Okay. Right. So director Ron Underwood has directed all of these except for one of these movies slash TV shows. Okay. Okay. Are we doing number counts here or no? Mm, oh, we should. Ooh, yeah, one. Sorry. Uh, 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 number. One, daddy. <laughs> City Slickers. Okay. Okay. Wait, number I missed that. 
Titty slickers. That's the one. All right. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Do the adventures of Pluto Nash. All right. Number three. Three. Uh, the show Desperate Housewives. Okay. Four yard. <laughs> The movie Leprechaun 2. Oh, yeah. No in the hood, but it's satisfactory. No, no, exactly. <laughs> Number five. Five! And, and five, the show Grey's Anatomy. So Ron Underwood has directed all but one. So, so four are true and one's a lie, is what you're saying. Yes, yes. One of them is a lie. I'm not going to explain myself. I'm just seeing like a connection between... Four of them, and one does not belong, and I'm going to say that's Grey's Anatomy. Okay. The other ones are all kind of, like, funny or silly or, like, rooted in, like, characters that... Eh, yeah, Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy on that. I, um, I feel like that's a really good pick, Rob. I hope so. I'm going to go... With the adventures of Pluto Nash. Don't know why he's jumping on at me. Okay. So, um, Ron Underwood, by the way, this um, uh, Tremors was his first movie oh. that, he, that he directed. I thought that was interesting. That is okay. And he did direct Pluto Nash. Damn. Which I thought was exciting because we did that one for one we of our did. episodes. Yeah. And he did not direct Leprechaun 2, which I might suggest for a B movie for this season. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm down for that. But he did direct an episode or two of Grey's Anatomy, a few episodes of Death uh, Housewives, uh, and City Slickers, most famously. That's I, what I, screwed I, me. That's what screwed me up is because um I was thinking of like a sh- I was thinking like show running, not directing. And I was like, oh, he was, there's no way he did like the whole series but like if it's a few episodes like well no 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 director does entire seasons anymore that's like the thing yeah. it's like that's that's right. certain directors do certain episodes and yeah, yeah it's it's kind of a it's, it's 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 a thing nowadays and and ever since yeah. like the 90s and that's why the mini series treatment works so well cuz you can get like bigger actors for like an 8 episode run and have like yeah. one director do it all together yes. yeah, that makes sense exactly good guess though well that sucks Okay, the catch-all. Catch-all, okay. If you've caught one, you've caught them all. Welcome to the catch-all. Yeah. Okay, uh, fun question. How many are uh, required for a stampede? That's in the very beginning. Uh, three or isn't, well, three or more? I guess right. Wasn't that like the logic? I feel like it, yeah, I feel like it must be more than that. Like, what did they say? I forget. They never yeah, definitively they did. answered yeah. it, did they? No, did I, don't, they? I don't think so. No, they were okay. debating like the finer points of like what makes a stampede a stampede, and Kevin right. Bacon was like, "I mean, it's like three or more. What are we talking here?" And then like the scene cut. I, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't think they answered. I think it's mm-hmm. got to be more than three. Yeah. He was thinking of polygons that, you know, they have like more than three sides and it's like a polygon. That's, right? Yeah. That's oh, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Seismographs are cool. <laughs> they are. They are. They are. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, my next point is negative two points for having Reva McIntyre because I hate Reva McIntyre. <laughs> I Fair. absolutely hate her. Fair. Um, well, they don't. Chris, 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 gun to head. Would you watch a movie with her or Saggy Jill and all? Which would you rather watch? Saggy Joe. <laughs> uh, I'd rather watch a movie with Reba McIntyre. <laughs> okay. She's, she's, she's prettier even now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> they don't immediately show the monster. I like that. That's good yeah, news. I, yeah. Exactly. I, yeah. I almost wish that they waited a little longer. Jaws logic, you know? Like yeah. The, uh, let the imagination do the work for you, and then you reveal it. Exactly. Um, 
Getting Edgar off the tower shows a good moral compass. Uh, they immediately go yeah. to rescue, uh, what's her name, Mindy? Uh, and the old guy, too. Like, Kevin Bacon dies and gets Mindy off of the pogo stick. Yeah. And they, they tried yeah. to save the old man, but... Um, or at least investigate what that what was happening. But if you watch our trailer, yeah. uh, which is live on TikTok and Instagram, you will see what happens. The horrible yeah. fate that befalls the old man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why not eat the sheep first, though? This almost went in most offensive. If you're a graboid, you've got a whole pen of sheep to eat. But he, yeah. you know, the graboid decides to go for the old man first. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, you're right. Good point. Uh, uh, counterpoint. Because they sense vibrations, and sheep pretty much just, like, stand and graze all day, don't they? I mean, they, they, they flock and they run around, but, like, the old man probably, like, had a reaction to it. He was using a shovel, wasn't he? Yeah. He was, but you watched the sheep? They were all over they the did place. Move. They did move. In Chris's yeah, terminology, he was tickling the seismic seducers. <laughs> at the same yeah. time, all those sheep moving at the same time may have felt like more of a threat than a one guy. That's true. I suppose, yeah. yeah. This we'll never know. Uh, on another good instance of uh, fast character development was the uh, old couple, couple who were debating whether or not they even wanted to put a roof on their house. Yeah, uh, the doctor. Yeah, it uh, it it was a uh, when the old man dies, it's it's effective. The uh, old man yeah. of of the couple. Oh heck yeah, totally yeah, effective. Like, <laughs> I, I felt horrible about it. Uh, some effects are great. I'm gonna say some are rough, but it's campy, so it's forgivable. Yeah. yeah. You know the ones that look like, like the worms, like um, extra snakes coming out of their mouths, kind yeah. of look like pipe cleaners or something. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's kind of a little rough. Or you know, three more penises, like a giant <laughs> penis with three more penises coming out. <laughs> yeah, um, get out of the car as it's being swallowed. Yeah, yeah I guess it's just you, you know every, every, everything's in there you, that you know you know safety. Yeah, yeah, also, I, I mean, like, I I can't say I've ever had firsthand experience with, like, being in a car that's being swallowed by a giant worm. But no, I yeah. imagine it's like being on a roller coaster that has lots of twists and turns. Like, I, I'm pretty sure, like, they probably, like, you know, you, like, have the core strength to, like, wiggle yourself out of that. I do. I don't. <laughs> you I, do. No, I, pro- I, I, pro- I probably do. I'm, I'm lanky, but I have a doughy center. <laughs> <laughs> well, Graboids love that, so watch out. <laughs> uh, the horses drop Earl and Val, leaving uh, a scene of good tension. Yeah, when agreed. They run, when they run off, yeah, and then you're like, oh, fuck, they're in big trouble. Yeah, yeah totally uh, agreed. The floor is lava. Mm-hmm. That's, it, yeah. I mean, that's always fun. And then yeah, they go, totally rock fun. Out. Yeah. Uh, the female lead smarter than the male leads is uh, is always nice. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then that leads right into pole vaulting, which was her idea. Yeah. And the pole vaulting allowed for uh, good cheap cinematography. This is one of the things I was mentioning before. But when they all pole vault together from one rock to the next, it's it's a mm. really cool shot. I thought. Yeah. It is. Uh, good use of the boy who cried wolf trope too. With, yeah. Uh, Melvin. Yeah, that was really. That was the only bad thing. I saw that coming a mile away, and I, I don't know. Maybe that was just me. Yeah. Um, well, he doesn't die. I, if he died, maybe it would have been better. Uh, right. Because my next point is, Melvin is a little shit. Yeah. <laughs> he very, is. very uh, true. We mentioned it already, but Mindy on the pogo stick works really well. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> um, crazy but cool gun arsenal. Yeah, like they it, know you want to watch people shoot guns in a movie like this, so they give one guy mm-hmm. an entire arsenal and he uses it. Yep, it's right. a term- um, Terminator too, like the underground. Yeah, yeah. yes, it's exactly. I, I was, I'm pretty anti-gun. I was even like, yeah, fuck yeah, man, look at that yeah. elephant gun. Yeah, yeah these yeah. evil, disgusting things deserve to be shot by whatever you have. So yeah, yeah, exactly. hit them with everything. Uh, here's a knock. Too much time to just reload and fire on the thing, though, Bert. Like it mm-hmm. comes through the wall and then it's just like, hey, what yeah. are you doing? You know, just kind of <laughs> chilling out. It's like, why isn't it trying to eat them instead of just taking more bullets to the? Because it's got to recover place. from that that wall smash. True. Yeah. Well, then don't smash the wall, you <clears throat> dumbass. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> crappy cheap cat and tanker that work really well for the movie so it probably didn't increase the budget by too much i don't imagine because they're old yeah. and, you know broken down but it was smart for the movie yeah. um atlanta hawks hat i love that i don't yeah. know if it has an atlanta hawks hat but it's, it's cool yeah uh Bert keeps the gun empty the one that he gives to melvin I was yeah, that would would put it in my um honorable mention if you didn't bring it up because that's just such a great scene. It was it awesome. Is. Yeah, you're running, didn't you? Uh, so yeah, so he um convinces Melvin to run off of the tanker to the rocks by offering him a gun, and then when Melvin goes to use it, doesn't have any bullets in it because Bert doesn't trust that Melvin won't like accidentally shoot somebody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, little fact or no fact there. Uh, apparently, when he takes the gun back, he still checks it. For ammo, which apparently is like good gun ah, uh, safety see. measures, like you yeah. still okay. check it even if you know it. Even if you know it doesn't. Have, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Um, here's a couple more knocks. Uh, the worm spits the bomb back out with great accuracy, and it lands on a stack of bombs. Yes, yes. which is uh, that one I didn't like. And then the uh, the explosion was no bigger than just one explosion of those things, even though there was like thirty of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, zero hour trope with the bomb and uh, Val's mm-hmm. like worm dodge. Val's and, worm dodge. <laughs> Val's worm dodge. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> Kevin Bacon just looks laughable in that last scene, cowboy, like all white getup. <laughs> <laughs> like Steve the King the stand. <laughs> yeah, it, just, <laughs> it looked really, really dumb. Do you guys have uh, anything you want to mention before we get to Rob's alternate ending? No, yeah, it was just, a, just a fun movie, dude. Like I, like I, I text fun. you guys being like, it's kind of crappy, but like I can't like stop watching it because it's yeah, it, it's it is what it is. It's just one of those. It's not meant to be taken too seriously, but it has good good tension and it just it drives along real fast and you're you're in you're out, bang bang boom. Yep. You know? It's true. <sighs> okay, okay. Uh, your alternate ending, please. Yeah. Um, I didn't come up with one because I'm retiring the bit for Rob's Mar- Magic Marvel Corner, which will start next season, in which oh, yeah. I will use the minute or two during where I would do the um, alternate ending to systematically work myself through the entire Marvel Studios canon, which includes 33 films. Um, just a little sneak peek. I, I I did watch Iron Man. Kind of like okay. it. It's pretty cool. Kind of neat. Um, yeah, it is. Robert Downey Jr. looks a lot like Mike Patton from Faith, um, from Faith No More during his Tomahawk era. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, love yeah, dude, that's, that's exactly what I loved about the movie, too. I, yeah. I, I, that's that's, that's my that. main takeaway. Is like, hey, man, like, they could like totally like get Tomahawk on the soundtrack. Just by, by like just likeness alone. Um, if, if, I, if I had thought of that, I would have watched Iron Man uh in, instead of this movie yeah because i love mike patman <laughs> mike patman he's, he's awesome dude I, I love everything his dillinger escape plan stuff the mr bungle stuff it's all yep good. um yeah all right i mean like that's it i'm retiring the bit it'll come back in some way shape or form i i'm sure by episode 500 once i get through all the marvel stuff but well hey i, um, I say if you think of one uh as you're going just throw it in the mentions for the catch-all yeah just know, throw it in the mix yeah or something yeah I'm excited about the Magic Marvel Corner. I'm gonna try watching Hulk this week just because I want to have I want to get ahead a couple weeks. Not. Just it's Edward Norton though, so I mean I'll I'll try to tolerate it. Right? It's bad. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, yeah, I got the names. Yeah. All right. Cool. Bad credit names like I'm uh, Harvey Manfred Johnson. Uh, quite a number of these, starting uh, <laughs> starting slow with John Casino. Hey. Fun. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, Pamela Berbermeyer. Okay. And Jeffrey Hagenbuckle. <laughs> Hagenbuckle? Yeah. Wow. Right. Um, George Moose Colucci. Is uh, Colucci. Moose like, like chocolate moose or like the animal? Like the animal. Okay. 
Mm. Uh, th- that's one of three nicknames. Here's the next Cowboy Joe Elroy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really like this one. I'm assuming it's Jesus, but I'm reading it Jesus Chewy Perez. Chewy? Chewy. Chewy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, hair and makeup was done by the Flying Fabrizi sisters. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Rice Rosuski. Rice Ruskuski. Okay. <laughs> and then we've, I mean, this person wins. We've heard this name before. I, I'm sorry. Uh, it just wins. Aaron Glasscock. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. You just, I mean, you just win. So totally. uh, there's that. Um, instead of comparing the movies, I thought it'd be fun if I just reminded everyone of all the good movies that we've done so that you can go back into okay. the archives and listen to them if you like. At the worst um, movie ever made dot com. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tremors. Terminator 2, The Exorcist, The Crow, The Empire Strikes Back, Airplane, The Dark Knight, Air- Raising Arizona, Jaws, and The Big Lebowski. Weird. Seven of them start with T. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But, um, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six of those start with the. <laughs> yeah. So. I like um, it. All right. Do you want to uh, plug our shit, Rob, and then we'll send it to Bob. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Uh, www.theworstmovieevermade.com. You could find us on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, uh, iTunes, all that good stuff. Um, YouTube episodes uh, go live on Sunday, uh, very early, like midnight, like you know, Saturday night into Sunday, I guess I should say. Um, and our Tic Tac and Tic Tac. I sound like the Congress <laughs> people. You know, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chu, does this Tic Tac have Wi Fi in it? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys watch that or not. But anywho, if you did watch, it, email us at theworstmovieevermade.com because you can also click the little envelope and shoot us an email. Um, suggest movies. We're doing our B movie season. Um, this is, uh, you know, as Chris said last week so succinctly, it's a, uh, if you're going to a double feature, this is the one that you see on your way out, basically. You see, yeah. you go for your A movie, which is the one everybody wants to see. The B movie is what just fills the double feature. Um, and we're going for the bad ones. This was a good one. Um, Bob? I was going to say Graboids, but I'm going <laughs> to replace it with Glasscock. Glasscock. But what's, Glasscock. Our, what's, what's our movie for next week? Did we announce it? Oh, Ooh, no, we, we didn't. I'm really out. glad yeah. you said that. We got to check the poll right now. Already got fingered. Come on. I don't know if that's a B movie, though. I mean, like, it's. I, I would consider it to be it's one. Not an but... A. It's not an A movie. I'll tell a you that. Yeah. Was it big? Stu- was it major studio released? That's the thing. Uh, <laughs> it's holy shit. It's it's Sharknado by a mile. Yes. <laughs> okay. Nobody that, voted for. That's nobody a voted fucking, for Time Cop. That's a B movie. It's a low budget. It's a B yeah. movie. Okay. I like it. Time, Time Cop is not a B movie. It was definitely a major studio. Okay. okay. I really just wanted to get back to the action movies that I love. <laughs> Sharknado. Okay. I, I have I have a, a, a Steven Seagal B movie. A Steven Seagal and Mike Tyson. Don't wow. look it up. It's okay, it's going it's well. it's going on my list. I'm, and I'm, I'm also, whatever week you do that, I'm doing that too, so we have a better chance. <laughs> I'm also going to do my due diligence and research, like what a B movie is, because like, I know the concept of it, but like the, the, I didn't think of like oh smaller studio because I I assume like big studios can put out B movies too, so like. I'll do yeah. my research and like come up with an actual um, list of B movies that I'm going to pull from for the polls because uh, it's all just like the same to me. It's just things on a screen that happen to me, so I don't really consider like where it's coming <laughs> from. I just, like I just consume it and then I move on. So um, well, I'll do my Shark- Sharknado that. had a huge following, but it was definitely a low budget. I want to okay. say straight to video release. It was a, it was a yeah. one that popularized the sci-fi like let's just take two random scary things and throw them together. Yes, yeah, exactly. So right. It's a good one to do because it, it is a moment in movie history. So we should yeah, exactly. talk about it. It is. I'm excited. One yeah. of the films of all time. <laughs> Never seen one it. of the films of all time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, Rob, can you play number two one more time? Uh, sure. Let's count down number two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> that was my Nathan explosion from Metalocalypse impersonation. Okay, see you guys. See you next week. Sharknado. Let's do it. I'm just doing my desk. Oh, mommy, get it.